So we're really excited to have Karen with us today. Uh, do we have Karen's slides up? We do. Excellent. You could read about her amazing bio in the program, but um, literally can't wait to hear about artificial intelligence and nutrition. Dr. Karen Panetta, please uh, take it away. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, I am going to talk about artificial intelligence. Now, a lot of you have probably seen that AI has proliferated quite greatly and has been adopted very quickly. And unfortunately, there are some systems out there where people think it's a magic black box. And because it's computer generated, computers never make mistakes. So it's always right, regardless of whether the decision makes sense or not. Uh, so today, I'm going to just to level set this, even in this room, you probably all have very, very different definitions of what artificial intelligence is. So is it something that mimics human behavior? Is it something that should perform better than humans? Is it computer systems that assist humans? Are they the science fiction ones that are going to evolve and take over humanity? I have a definition because I felt when I started working in this field, it was really important to level set and have a common theme so that we could all move towards that theme. So this is my definition. It's computer systems that enable us to explore, explain, and expand our knowledge and capabilities to benefit humanity. And I want to stick with that theme because I want to also figure out, well, all right, this is our, our major goal. But there are challenges out there. You heard Dr. Langer this morning talk about one of them. That's why I asked the question. But the first one is, right now, everybody says, well, it should be better than the expert. Well, when you go to someone and you want an expert, you don't want a yes, no answer. You want context of why they made that decision, what the process was, how, what, what was the thinking or reasoning going into this thought process. The other thing was when I started working with nutrition scientists here at the Friedman School, I learned about something called a Framingham study with data, because I'm a data lady. And I looked about this Framingham study, and I looked at it and I said, this thing's like, what, 20, 25 years old? I'm, some, I'm sorry, that's ancient. And they're like, well, that's the data. So from an engineering perspective, it was like, eh, no, that's not good enough. We have to do better. But I understand that data collection, annotating, and labeling is hugely expensive, and I think it's painful. I, I actually had to watch my students do it. I felt sorry for them. It's very painful to watch somebody do this because it's monotonous, which also introduces other errors because if you're doing it over and over, you're probably going to introduce other errors. I'm very interested in interdisciplinary types of things. So there's disparate sets of data all from different disciplines. I do engineering, but I want to work with nutrition. I also want to work with the medical schools. How do I get all this information and utilize it? And then finally, I want to make sure that I understand why a decision was made. So let's look at the landscape of what's out there. We are being bombarded with app overload. So I have one of these apps. I have many of these apps. And I look at them. And I, I put them in the same category as my expensive exercise equipment, which I use as a very expensive clothes hanger. It's, it's behavior. It's not just the ability to have the tools. It's changing behaviors and capturing those behaviors. So I do these, these apps, and I look at them. And then I get in the scale, and I want to squish it with a rock, because it's not the result I want. But I also don't like tracking, right? Nobody likes tracking. So there's much more information out there that we also really need to be tracking. So what we came up with here at Tufts is something called TRAIN, which is transforming research in artificial intelligence for nutrition. And I partnered with all my engineering colleagues, as well as Professor Economos and Dr. Hennessy from the Friedman School of Nutrition. And we looked at this and we said, if we were to build an architecture that could encompass all the different diverse fields that influence nutrition, including whether there was a fire, a flood that affected the foods. What do I have locally access to? Uh, COVID-19 changed everything, as well as, well, there's an E. coli breakout. So how do we look at all these different disparate areas and come up with ways 
to see things and learn things about our world, such as how do I prevent a breakout of E. coli if I can do early detection? How can I have better, more accurate tracking and less painful ways and better compliance? And how do I educate the future on how to use these tools? And then how do we come up with early interventions? We know cognitive um, decline is also affected by nutrition. Let's come up with ways to do that. So we ventured into our first project, which actually has a lot of um, IP uh, associated with it, was because I'm lazy, I'm an engineer, we're lazy, we want instant gratification, I wanted to just be able to take a picture of something after I ate it. After I eat it, tell me what I ate, tell me how much I actually ate. I don't want to have to say I ate half a, a hamburger, I cheat. I'll say, yeah, I ate a quarter of it. I don't want it, I, I want honest assessment. So what we did was we built this system that can take the image acquisition from your phone and automatically detect that this is a cheesecake, that this is french fries, and then be able to, we use reconstruction for visualization, but then we can use our experts, Dr. Hennessy and Dr. Economos, use AI to capture their expertise to then tell the user, here's what you really ate. And we do it in real time. That is one of the key things. You don't want to wait for these things. So state-of-the-art AI today might take 15, 20 minutes to process some of these. The one image, we do it in near real time, so it's uh, nearly non-discernible to the human eye. So we have something that we also created. You heard data, right? Creating data is essential for AI. Now, you might say, there's millions of pictures out there on the internet. Why can't we just use those? Because I don't know if it's a artificial one of David Kaplan's burgers versus a real uh, hamburger that I might actually eat. Uh, and, and so what we did was we created this study um, funded by the National Institute of Health, and we did it in three phases. So we used um, participants where we, uh, we was constrained to foods in um, restaurants, and then we, uh, we're in phase three where we're doing real world environments or free foods, and we're using the, uh, the Comstock method to evaluate these things and looking at the, the, the leftovers. So now this database is available for you if you want to do any sort of AI research as well. But that's not enough. Remember I said I want to, after I'm done, I want to be able to tell you exactly what you ate like I had Dr. Hennessy or Dr. Economos evaluate this for me. How am I going to do that? I need to capture the expertise of the expert. And right now, a lot of the data that's out there is the diagnosis. It's yes, it's an infection, it's not infection. Yes, you know, it's, you're obese or you're not obese. That's not what we want to hear. We want to know the context in which these decisions were made. So my lab created the world's first automatic expert um, capture system. We used eye tracking, we took what they said, we correlated it, and we also looked, so see at the images as they were doing the diagnosis. So we did this with x-ray images to start, and the reason we did that is because x-ray images are the most prolific um, images in medical, to, uh, medical fields today. So we took Dr. Aruna Ramesh, and we created and emulated Dr. Aruna Ramesh by taking all these images and being able to see where she was looking and then having her describe to me about bone thinning and infection. And we're going to do the same thing for these different fields. And now I can augment my data sets. We can now integrate these with our nutrition and start to be able to think about frameworks in a much greater, broader sense. So what is the future? And I put elephants up there, not just because Tufts is the Jumbo is our, is our mascot. It just happened to work out that way. I did actually work with the vet school as well on these AI projects, looking at how the animal overpopulation affects crops and disease. And again, there's another piece that comes into the whole uh, landscape of nutrition. Well, one of the things that we think about when E. coli breaks out or pathogens break out, we didn't see it. So therefore, we eat something we don't know. Unless we can smell it or see it or it's moldy or gross, we don't think about it, right? We just eat it. So elephants have probably the most sensory organs than any animal on the planet. And that means that they can sense things way better than humans. And we're so constrained to our own, well, if we can't see it or hear it, there must be, it's not there. Well, we know that it is there. And there are tons of sensors out there that can do it. In the, in the animal world, they have many of these sensors. They can sense vibrations, but they can smell really well, and they can have infrasound, which we don't have. 
So the question is, why can't we use these low-cost sensors to allow us to sense things that are there that we can't really see or perceive with our own sensors? So as engineers, and our job now with the AI is utilizing these sensors to then collect this data, plug it into the AI, and then have it communicate and visualize to human perception, here's what's actually here, including pathogens, including all these other factors that we might be overlooking. And if we can do that, then we would be able to see and understand and explore and explain phenomena that are making us sick and killing us. So with that, I thank you for your attention, and I hope that if there's anything you are interested in, this is all Tufts IP, and we would be really ex uh, excited to work with anybody who's interested in pursuing any field of nutrition related to artificial intelligence. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you.